Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you huskies! Gold. Gold discovered in a Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Yes, all aboard for a breakfast treat that can't be beat. Tomorrow morning, treat yourself to the breakfast cereal shot from guns. That's the one and only Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Just pour out a bowl full, crisp and fresh, right from the big red and blue package. Add milk or cream, top with your favorite fruit. Man, oh man, see if you ever tasted anything so swell as these giant king-sized kernels of premium wheat or rice shot from guns. Don't miss out another day on this breakfast treat. Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Tommy Elliott stood at the gate of one of the enclosed dog runs outside his father's cabin. As he watched the huskies prowling restlessly up and down inside the wire enclosure, he felt himself shaking with nervousness. Tommy's father, Paul Elliott, eyed the boy disapprovingly. Well, what in thunder's the matter with you, son? You're shaking like a leaf. Dad, I just can't help it. I'm afraid of dogs. Well, it's high time you stop being afraid of them. Never should have let you stay so long with Mark Carter down in Dawson. About time you learned how to harness a dog. Dad, I, I don't know whether I'm brave enough to try that just yet. Now, don't start getting scared. These dogs won't bite you. Come here, Carlo. Here, fella. Yes, yeah, good old Carlo. Now, listen, Tom. I'm going to open the gate, let Carlo out. You take him by the collar, lead him over to the sled. Then I'll show you how to hitch him up. All right. I'll try. All right, here goes. As the gate opened, the husky came bounding forward joyfully. Well, don't back away from him. He's not going to hurt you. But he's barking at me. Of course he's barking. He wants to play. Now go ahead and take a hold of his collar. Show him you're not as scared. But, Dad, I am scared. Gingerly, Tommy reached out his hand. The husky responded eagerly, expecting to be petted. He jumped up to lick Tommy in the face. No! The sudden movement was too much for Tommy's taut nerves. He fled in panic. Dan, he's coming at me. I'll come back here. Get back in there, Carlo. Back, boy. Back. Dad, I, I'm sorry. I just couldn't help it. I, when I saw Carlo coming toward me, I, I just had to run away. Oh, nonsense. Living with Mark Carter has turned you into a mollycoddle. That's your whole trouble. Uh, go into the cabin and stay there. You're through sniffling. I'm sick and tired of your tongue foolishness. You're going to get over this silly fear of dogs, and you're going to do it by tomorrow morning. Do you understand? Early the next morning, Sergeant Preston was on his way to Dawson City. King was running ahead of the team as loose lead. Suddenly, as he approached a cave in the hillside, he halted abruptly. He had caught the scent of a human being inside the cave. Oh, yeah. oh no. What's the matter, King? Something in that cave? All right, boy, we'll take a look. Without waiting for his master, King ran forward into the cave. The sergeant broke into a run. As he entered the cave, he saw a boy huddled in terror against the rear wall. Well, hello. What's wrong? That dog, please, call him away from me. King won't hurt you. I don't care. Just get him away from me. Please, get him out of here. Please. All right. Come here, King. Go on out, fella. Wait outside. 
King was puzzled, but he obeyed his master without question. Now, suppose you tell me who you are and what you're doing here. My name's Tommy Elliott. I was on my way to Dawson City. Got so cold and tired, I had to stop in this cave to rest up. You mean you've been here all night? Well, part of the night. Why, you poor kid, you must be half frozen. Suppose I make a fire and fix you something to eat, and then you can tell me all about yourself. Half an hour later, Tommy Elliott was seated before a roaring fire, hungrily cleaning up the last of the oatmeal and bacon which the sergeant had prepared for him. Feel a bit better now? Oh, sure. Lots better. Gee, I, I never knew anything could taste so good. And tell me, Tom, where'd you start out from? From my father's place. He's got a cabin about a mile or so outside of Nugget City. Name is Paul Elliott. Is that the Paul Elliott who owns the dog kennel? Yeah, that's right. He raises huskies and breaks them into harness and sells them to prospectors. Well, how in the world does it happen you started out for Dawson City all by yourself? Well, I... I ran away from home last night. Huh. What made you do that? Don't you get along with your father? Yeah, I get along with him all right. It, it's just that... Well, uh... Just as what? I'm afraid of dogs. I try not to be, but I can't help it. Dad thinks I'm a coward. Yesterday... He, told me he was sick and tired of my my foolishness. Said I was going to have to get over my fear of dogs by this morning. I didn't know what to do. So you ran away? Yes, sir. I sneaked out after Dad went to sleep. Well, Tommy, I'll admit that fear is a pretty tough proposition for anyone to face. But you'll never solve your problem by running away from it. Now, please don't make me go back, Sergeant. Have you always been afraid of dogs? Not as much as I am now, I guess. What do you mean? Well, once when I was about eight years old, I, I was picking berries in a neighbor's garden. This was back home in the States when, when Mom was alive. Anyway, the neighbor saw me and set his big watchdog on me. Gosh, Sergeant, it was awful. The dog really didn't hurt me so much, but he, he scared me almost to death. I guess maybe that's when I first started being afraid of dogs. I see. Does your dad know that? No, sir. I, I never told either Dad or Mom. I was afraid they'd spank me for stealing the berries. Oh, Sergeant, what's the matter with him? He's sticking his head in the cave. Don't be afraid, Tom. King's just letting us know he's still alive. He's not used to being left out of things this way. Oh, gosh, I thought at first he was coming in after me. Would you be very frightened if he did come inside the cave for a minute or two? Well, I, I guess not if he doesn't come too close to me. Here, King. Come on in, fella. That's the boy. Gosh, he's laying his head right in your lap. Guess he must be pretty fond of you. We've been through a lot together, haven't we, old fellow? You know, Tommy, I think King would appreciate it if you'd pat him a few times. Would you mind? Well, I'll try, only... Only would you make sure he holds still while I'm doing it? You needn't worry about that. I guarantee King won't move a muscle. Now, look, fella. Tommy's going to pat you on the head a couple of times. I want you to hold still while he's doing it. Understand? Hold perfectly still. All right, Tommy. Go ahead and pet him. All right. You must understand exactly what you say, Sergeant. He's not moving at all. That's King's way of saying that he likes you, too. Sergeant Preston, do you think I'm a, a sissy for being afraid of dogs? Of course not, Tommy. Lots of boys and girls feel the same way you do. In fact, it's wise to feel a little bit afraid because then you know enough to keep your distance from strange dogs who might turn out to be vicious. The important thing is learning to discard your fear when it isn't necessary. Well, I guess it isn't necessary to be afraid of King, is it, Sergeant? That's right, Tommy. The only people King ever attacks are lawbreakers, and he won't hurt them unless they get violent. Once you get to know dogs, you'll find that most of them are just as friendly and easy to get along with as King is. Hey, maybe if you're going to be stationed in Dawson City for a while, I could get to be real good friends with King. I don't see why not. What were you planning to do when you got to Dawson? I was going to stay with Ma Carter. She's the lady who runs a boarding house. I've been staying with her for over a year. In fact, ever since we first came to the Yukon. I only went to live with Dad about a week ago. Well, Tommy, I don't know whether I'm doing the right thing or not, but suppose you come along to Dawson with me. I'll take you to Ma Carter, and then we'll see about notifying your father. In the days that followed, Sergeant Preston and King were frequent visitors at Ma Carter's boarding house. 
and Tommy, in turn, often visited his newfound friends at Mountie headquarters. Little by little, under the sergeant's patient guidance, Tommy outgrew his fear of dogs and came to regard them with interest and even affection. Finally, Sergeant Preston taught him how to hitch up a team of sled dogs and how to handle a sled on various types of terrain. Tommy's biggest thrill came on the day Sergeant Preston allowed him to drive his own magnificent team of huskies down the main street of Dawson City. Golly, Sergeant, can you keep up with us? Don't worry about me, Tommy. We're coming to headquarters now, Tommy. Oh, oh there you are. Oh, oh, there. Hey, that lad really handled them huskies. You ought to be able to handle them. The sergeant's been teaching him for the last two, three weeks. How'd I do, Sergeant? Very well, Tommy. All you need now is a little experience on the trail. A good old king. I bet I could handle any team with you in the lead, boy. Sergeant, I can hardly wait to show Dad all the things I've learned from you and King. I have an idea your father will be mighty proud of you, Tommy. But look, Sergeant, here comes Constable Ross. Oh, yes, so I see. Looks like he has something to say to me. Hello, Alex. Howdy, Sergeant. Hello there, Tommy. Hi, Constable. The inspector wants you to report to him right away, Sergeant. He's got a job for you. Huh? What's up? A couple of fur thieves have been operating north of ways. They've been raiding a lot of the trappers between here and 40 Mile. And they line on who they are? Well, they haven't been identified, but we have pretty good descriptions. One's a red-headed bruiser. The other's dark and stocky. They have a big, vicious brute of a dog, all black. Apparently, he helps them intimidate their victims. Mm, they sound like nice people. We just got word that they robbed a trapper named Frenchy Dijon up near Nugget City. The inspector thinks King may be able to pick up their trail. Well, does that mean you'll be going to Nugget City, Sergeant? Well, I guess so, Tommy. Why? Well, Sergeant, could you take me with you? You wouldn't have to go out of your way. You could drop me off in Nugget City, and I could walk the rest of the way to my dad's place. You think you're ready to handle that kennel full of huskies? Oh, I'm sure I am, Sergeant. All right, Tommy. You wait till I've talked to the inspector, and then we'll go and tell Ma Carter what you've decided. We'll continue our story in just a moment. For a breakfast that's delicious, for a breakfast that's nutritious, remember these three famous words. Shot from gun. Yes, shot from gun stands for the original, the one and only, Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. These are the giant size, the king size grains of premium wheat or rice shot from guns to make them bigger and better tasting. Think of it. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are actually exploded up, up, up to eight times normal size. That makes them crisp and tender as nuts in November. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are shot through and through with bang-up nut-like flavor, too. And as Mother knows, wheat or rice shot from guns makes a deluxe family breakfast that's economical, that's easy to fix as falling off a log. Just pour out a bowl full and add some fruit and milk or cream. Say, talk about good. And what's more, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are good for you, too. They furnish added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. So how about it? The whole family will be getting off to a flying start when you eat Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. It's never sold in bags or bulk. To get the original crisp, fresh wheat or rice shot from guns, always buy the big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. Get Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Now to continue our story. On the same morning that Sergeant Preston and Tommy Elliott left Dawson, two men sat in a shack in the woods several miles from Nugget City. Their names were Red Basie and Spike Dunn. Spike, I've been thinking. It's about time we pulled our freight. That suits me fine. First thing we got to do is figure out how we're going to get these pelts over the border. We sure ain't going to manage the stuff on one dog sled. Well, we can buy ourselves another outfit in Dawson or 40 Mile. What with? We've only got about a hundred bucks cash between us. We, we can get more money by selling a couple of pelts. Nothing doing. By this time, the Mallee's probably got our descriptions. 
No sense sticking our heads in the lion's mouth. Well, we got to get ourselves another team somewhere. Listen, there's a guy named Paul Elliott that raises huskies about a mile or so west of town. We can get a team from him. Well, he ain't in business for his health. It'll cost just as much to buy dogs from him as it will to buy him in Dawson or 40 miles. Who says we're going to buy him? <laughs> I see what you mean. <laughs> Think we can get away with it? Sure we can get away with it. Elliot lives all by himself and there ain't another cabin in sight. <laughs> Sounds like a cinch. When do we start? No sense waiting around. We'll hitch up the team and start over to Elliot's place right now. An hour later, Red Basie and Spike Dunn waited in front of Paul Elliott's cabin while Paul picked out nine huskies and harnessed them to a sled. Then he said, Well, there's your outfit, gents. Price is $1,500 cash in the line. Sorry, Elliot, but we haven't got that much money. Gee, what's the idea of pulling a gun on me? The idea is that we get a free team of huskies and you get nothing. You can't get away with this. Who's going to stop us? Spike, go get that rope we brought and we'll tie him up. All right. Paul Elliott waited until Spike was several yards away. Then he lunged at Red. For a moment, the two men grappled. Paul Elliott had a grip on Red's gun hand, was trying to use the outlaw as a shield in case Spike fired. Suddenly, Red's gun went off. Holy smoke, Red just shot him. He ain't dead. He just wounded. What are we going to do? Same thing as we planned on doing. Tie him up and leave him here. The two outlaws tied Paul Elliott's hands and feet together and carried him into the cabin. Get that door open. Right. Put him right down here. Oh, looks like he's coming, too. Maybe we better gag him while we're at it. Good idea. Hey, use that towel that's hanging over there. All right. I sure wish we were heading straight for the border when we leave here, instead of going back to shack. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Suppose we leave Wolf here while we go get the furs. We'll tie him out in front of the cabin on a good long lead. That's a sense no one will come poking their nose around with him on guard. Why, Thunder, that's a smart idea. <laughs> He'll think Elliot went away somewhere. Left Wolf behind the watchdog. Yeah, that, that ties him tight now. We'll go load up the furs, and we'll come back and get Wolf and head for the border. Right, let's get going. Soon after the two outlaws left Paul Elliott's cabin, Sergeant Preston and Tommy Elliott arrived in Nugget City. Looking, okay. oh, huskies! Hold on! Well, I guess this is the parting of the ways, Tommy. Gee, thanks a lot for bringing me here, Sergeant. And thanks a lot for letting me drive the team part of the way. Think you can make it out to your father's place all right? Oh, yes, sir. It isn't far. Uh, goodbye, King. <laughs> goodbye, Sergeant. Bye, Tommy. All right, King. Line the team, boy. On King! On your husband! Tommy left Nugget City and headed west on foot. Half an hour later, he arrived at his father's cabin. He was surprised and somewhat unnerved to find a huge, vicious looking black dog in front of the cabin. As Tommy approached, the dog strained at his leash and bared his fangs in a ferocious snarl. Oh, gosh! What a big dog! I'll never be able to get close to the cabin the way he's acting. I wonder if Dad's inside. Dad! Oh, Dad! Inside the cabin, Paul Elliott heard his son's voice. He struggled to answer in spite of his gag, but only succeeded in uttering a few weak, strangled noises. Tommy was puzzled. He had never seen the savage black dog before and felt sure that it didn't belong to his father. And yet, somehow, it aroused a faint, disturbing memory in his mind. Gee, there's something familiar about that dog. I wonder what he's doing here. Hey, wait a minute. Now I remember. Constable Ross said those two robbers had a big, vicious black dog. I wonder if they've been here and done something to Dad. Meanwhile, Paul Elliott was struggling desperately to signal his son. He was weak from pain and loss of blood. Summoning all his strength, he rolled over against the front wall of the cabin and kicked against it with his feet. Outside the cabin, Tommy heard his father's signal. Someone's inside. Must be Dad. I bet they tied him up and he's trying to signal me. Gosh, what am I going to do? If only there were a back door to the cabin. Tommy knew that his father kept a supply of frozen caribou meat for the huskies stored away in the woodshed. He went and got several pieces and then returned to the front of the cabin. His heart was pounding as he approached the huge black dog. Hey, yeah. He threw the dog a chunk of meat. The dog pounced on it greedily. Tommy threw down two more pieces. Now or never was the time to slip by. Step by step, Tommy began edging toward the cabin. Suddenly, the dog looked up and snarled. Tommy froze in terror. No. No. No, I'm not going to run away. 
I gotta get past him. Tommy threw down the last chunk of meat. The dog seized it and resumed his feeding. With a determined air, Tommy walked up to the door of the cabin. As Tommy entered the cabin, he saw his father lying bound and gagged on the floor. Oh, Dad, you've been hurt. Let me get this gag off first, then I'll untie you. There. Tell me, thank heavens you heard me. How in heaven's name did you get past that dog? I got some meat from the woodshed and fed it to him. Oh, golly, Dad, these knots are stiff. Don't bother untying them. Get my knife over on the shelf. All right. In a few minutes, Tommy had cut the ropes around his father's wrists and ankles. Then he staunched the blood from the wound with a crude bandage while his father explained what had happened. They may come back any time, son. You'd better clear out of here as quick as possible. Well, what about you? I don't think I'd better do much moving. That'll be all right. I'll go get Sergeant Preston. He was going to some trapper's cabin, a, a trapper named Frenchy Dijon. No, oh, no. You better head for town. Frenchy's place is over near Caribou Pass. It's a good five miles north of here. I'll hitch up a team and drive there. It won't take long. No, don't joke, Tommy. This is serious. I'm not joking, Dad. I can handle a team. Huh? What? What in thunder has come over you, Tommy? First... You're not afraid of that big brute out in front of the cabin, and now you're telling me you can handle a team. Well, I... Sergeant Preston taught me how. He taught me a lot of things. Tell me, if, if you're telling the truth, I... Well, I don't know what to say. I don't say anything, Dad. You can talk later after a doctor fixes you up. I better get going right away. Do you think you can get past that dog again all right? I think so. If you got any more meat, I can throw him. Uh, there's some corned beef on the shelf. And uh, while you're over that way, hand me my gun. Yeah, all right. There. Here's your gun, Dad. Now, if those men do come back, be careful. Uh, don't worry about me. Uh, just help me stand up, will you, son? But, Dad, do you think you're better with that wound? Sure, I'll be all right. Okay, if you say so. As Paul Elliott struggled to his feet, his face went white with pain. Oh. He gave a sudden groan and slumped to the floor, unconscious. Dad! Tommy stooped down and examined his father anxiously. Oh, he must be wounded awful bad. I better get help as quick as I can. Tommy dragged his father over to a bunk and arranged him as comfortably as possible. Then he left the cabin, using the same tactics as before to get past Wolf. Once in the clear, he hitched up a team of huskies and headed north toward Caribou Pass. Mush, Colonel! Mush, you huskies! At Frenchy de Jean's cabin, Sergeant Preston was questioning the old trapper about the robbery that had taken place the previous night. Then they tie me up and take all my furs, clear out. Those rascals, they get away with all my whole season's catch. A bad break, Frenchy, but maybe we can get your furs back. Sounds like someone is coming, Sergeant. I, I go see. Yeah. But you know, it is young boy. A boy? Why, it's Tommy Elliott. Wonder if something's wrong. Oh, hold now. Oh, hold now. Oh. Tommy, anything wrong? Oh, plenty's wrong, Sergeant. Those two crooks you're looking for, they came to the cabin and shot Dad. Huh? They've gone away, but they're coming back. Hastily, Tommy told the sergeant what had happened. You head for town and get a doctor. King and I will start for your father's cabin right away. Half an hour later, Red Basie and Spike Dunn halted their teams in front of Paul Elliott's cabin. Their sleds were loaded with the stolen fur pelts. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. You want to take a look inside the cabin just to make sure? Yeah, maybe I better. You untie Wolf. I'll go and see how Elliot's making out. Hey, wait a minute. Someone's coming. Holy smoke, it's a mountain. We'd better cut him down before he gets us first. Oh, it's a fool. Act friendly till he gets up close. When he's off guard, we'll get the drop on him and tie him up. All right. Forewarned by Tommy that the outlaws were coming back to the cabin, Sergeant Preston had already guessed the identity of the two men. Howdy, Sergeant. What brings you up this way? Put up your hands, both of you. Right. Hey, what's the idea of drawing on us that way? Because I'm placing you under arrest. You fool, Red. I told you we should have gunned him down. Never mind the argument. Just get your hands up fast. Wolf was standing close to the sergeant's gun hand. All right. The rope get attached to his collar had already been partly untied. As Spike Dunn raised his hands, he jerked the rope free. Get him, Wolf. <laughs> the vicious brute leaped at the sergeant, knocking the gun from his hand. King sprang instantly to his master's defense. But before the Mountie could recover his gun, both Spike and Red had him covered. Now you reach, Mountie. Good work, Spike. What do we do with the docks? Let him fight it out. Wolf will tear that Mountie up to pieces. 
Fascinated, the outlaws watched the savage struggle going on between the two dogs. Get him, Wolf! At first, Wolf seemed to have the advantage with his huge frame Get and powerful him. jaws, but he lacked King's speed and split-second timing. I thought you said Wolf would turn to pieces. That dog's killing him. King's no killer. He's just going to teach him a lesson. He's not even going to do that. I'll settle his hash. Before Red could pull the trigger, a shot rang out from the cabin window. Red dropped his gun and staggered backward, shoot, Spike, clutching shoot. his shoulder in pain. As Spike turned to fire at the window, Sergeant Preston sprang into action. Oh, you don't. With his left hand, the Mountie grabbed Spike's gun hand. His right fist smashed hard against Spike's jaw. Spike crumpled and went down. Meanwhile, King had Red Basie under control. Get him away from me. Get this dog away. My shoulder's busted. All right. Get on your feet, both of you. You're under arrest in the name of the Queen. Ten minutes later, Tommy arrived from town with a doctor. The doctor addressed Paul Elliott's wound. How about it, Doc? What's the bad news? Yeah, you'll, you'll be all right, Paul. But you're going to be flat on your back for the next three or four weeks. <laughs> well, in that case, I guess Tommy will have to run the kennels for me. You think you can handle it, son? Well, gee, Dad, I, I don't know, but I'll try. That's all I'm asking. After what you did today, I know you can handle the job. Paul, I still haven't thanked you for saving King's life. If you hadn't recovered consciousness when you did and shot Red, I hate to think what might have happened. Forget it, Sergeant. That's just a partial repayment of what Tommy and I owe to you and King. I guess we can all be pretty thankful that this case is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's adventure. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are never sold in bags or bulk. As mother knows, quality comes first in a food. That's why the famous breakfast cereals, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, are made from only the premium grains of wheat or rice. So to get the original crisp, fresh wheat or rice shot from guns, always buy the big red and blue Quaker packages. The packages with the smiling Quaker man on the front. Get the one and only delicious Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Never sold in bags or bulk. Listen Friday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of... The wishbone claims. When Buddy Edgar disappeared, we had no clues to where the boy might be. But King found him for us in a rocky prison high in the mountains. And the story the boy told us after his rescue led us into real danger and a desperate gunfight at the head of Wishbone Creek. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Friday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun. Remember, for delicious hot breakfast, enjoy Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. And here's why Quaker Oats is called the giant of the cereals. There's more growth more endurance in oatmeal than any other whole grain cereal. So make your hot breakfast nourishing Quaker Oats. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice.